Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenges of being a man in modern society and whatever the hell that even means. I'm Kane and joining me today to chat man stuff are Ryan and Maddie. This week we do need to give a bit of warning before we uh, kick off as we will be discussing something which, if you're a guy, may make you wince and your eyes water a little bit. We were talking about balls, nuts, pills, plums, bollocks, rocks, ghoulies, family jewels, nads or whatever you want to call your testicles because Maddie has very recently had the snip and by snip I mean vasectomy. Maddie, how's your sack? Yeah, it's going to rough, thanks, Kane. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, look, it's it's all well and good now. Yeah, so it was three weeks ago I went and got the snip done. And after that, I thought, yeah, i just bring it up with you, Kane, to see if we can um, have a chat about it because I'm not too sure how widely this topic is discussed with, with guys. So I thought I'd maybe give a bit of an in-depth of the procedure, how it all went, how, it, how it's been going afterwards. And, yeah, just sort of uh, shed a bit more light on... Um, on the topic. So. That'd, be, that'd be great because I know it is something which is, I've spoken to a few people about, a few mates who've had a couple of kids and going through this process now and really aren't sure what to expect or what it, you know, what the procedure is or what the recovery time is. So yeah, I'm really interested to kind of understand a little bit more about A, the thought process behind getting it done initially and then how you go about finding a surgeon, how you go about getting it done and then yeah, what that recovery looks like. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about any of those parts. Yeah, I, I was the same. Um, <laughs> we, um, the, the couple of guys I'd saw also mentioned it to um, prior, they, they sort of just, you know, said, oh, yeah, had the snip, it was all fine. And that was pretty much it. So I didn't really get too much information. So I thought this would be a good platform to do that. So i so been thinking about getting the snip for, you know, probably 12, 18 months. Um, we've got three kids at the moment. And a couple of years ago, I had testicular cancer. So after the chemotherapy, um, my oncologist just said, look, get some samples done to see where, where you're at in terms of sperm levels and things like that. So got those done and it was pretty much, uh, you know, uh, an empty vase. There was no, nothing there. So pretty much shooting blanks ever since. So the, the second and third child were IVF and the oncologist did say at the time as well, look, maybe you get checked in, you know, five, 10 years. The likelihood of it, you know, coming back is probably not great. Um, which which doesn't seem to be, which isn't really a problem now because we've got, you know, three great kids. So yeah, the next step was, okay, well then maybe we'll, I'll look at getting the SNP just, just to be safe because you didn't want, wouldn't want to have a, um, uh, one of those situations you hear about where you think you're done and dusted and then, you know, five or 10 years later, bang, you're pregnant again. Um, yeah, thoughts would be, would be a bit safer there. So after chatting with Kim about it, we uh, went and saw our GP and had a chat to him about it. And he recommended this, this guy in a suburb not too far away from here who's been doing this since, I think, 85. And he's pumping out, you know, hundreds of these, you know, over the course of the year. And he made a bit of a joke as well. He said, oh, you know, you should get half price because you've only got one testicle. So, Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you lost one as part of the testicular cancer, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I think the left one um, was taken away from me. So it's a bit yeah, lighter. We will discuss that on other podcasts as well. I know you're comfortable talking about it. So you went to the GP who's then referred you on to a guy who literally does hundreds of these a year or a month. Yeah. Or? It's yeah. his whole business. Um, it's his whole business. So he's, um, yeah, yeah, pumping them out. And I was speaking to actually my neighbor after I had the procedure and he had it done on the same guy. And then also there's a guy at... Uh, one of the mothers my wife talks to her husband's getting it done in the same guy as well. So I think he's pretty, um, yeah, pretty famous in the snip world around Brisbane. So I was, I, I was in safe hands, it turns out. So booked in for uh, a Friday morning console, 10 o'clock. So I got driven down there by the wife and she had to hang around just due to the sedation and things like that. You're not allowed to use machinery or drive home. That was one of the requirements. So up until that point, I was, I was quite nervous. So, Three or four weeks before the procedure, I was, you know, yep, happy to do it. Yeah, not really nervous at all. But, you know, the, the three or four days leading into it, I, I found myself getting quite nervous thinking about it, which I wasn't too sure why. I, I think more of the, because I just didn't know what was going to be happening. My name got called out, went to the, into the waiting room or the procedure room, sorry. And it was just, the, just Dr. Snip and his assistant sitting in there. He's like, trousers off, jump on the bed. The sedation in the arm, which which was great. That was um, yeah, it made me feel very uh, relaxed on cloud nine. And then he went to work within you know fifteen twenty minutes. I was I was done. He was saying, "All right, time to sit up and, and away you go." So went um, back into his little office, you know, all, all lightheaded and sort of 
bouncing off the walls down the corridors. I went in there holding his hand. And then he rattled off a whole heap of information, which luckily it's been written down because you feel so sort of a little bit out of it. Yeah, so, and that information was basically just the do's and don'ts following the procedure. So uh, ice for the rest of the day on the, on the old balls. So 15 minutes on, 45 off. And that was, I think, 12 hours. So up until 10 p.m. And then days two and three, sort of no activity, no, no uh, strenuous activity at least. And yeah, so, and lay horizontal for the rest of the Friday. So no sex uh, for a week after that as well. And come back in four months to do a semen test to make sure he's done his job properly. And that is the procedure. Well, so the, in the arm, was that a general or a local anaesthetic? I assume it's a general anaesthetic. You're under for 15 minutes? Uh, that was a local. No, sorry. No, actually, a sedation. He sedates you in the arm to give you, which relaxes the, the testicles down there and it makes it easier for him, I think. And then he puts a local in the area that he makes the incision. So, so a small incision and in the, um, in, in the ball sack is the, I think it's the, the vas, they call it. And that's what he snips. And then he ties those two ends and then restitches back up the ball sack. So it sort of feels like um, pulling out hairs from your arm, I guess, for the, for about 10, 15 minutes. So it is, you can, whilst you've uh, got a local down there and you're also under sedation, you do sort of feel a bit of a, you know, jabbing pain for the 10 to 15, but nowhere near as, as bad as what I thought it was going to be. It was, yeah, it was, it was all right. So there's literally a snip because I know there's, there's, there's different, I think, mechanisms of doing it. Like there's a snip. I've heard about like a like a laser, which I'm probably not, I wouldn't be too keen on having seen. Uh, Austin yeah, Austin Powers, yeah, with the shucks, the freaking lasers. So this was legitimately just yeah, in incision with, I guess, a scalpel, nurse scalpel, and then stitches. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, blood packs and gauze is required or? Exactly like that. Yep. Scalpel down there to, uh, to open it up and then um, in there with the, with the snip. So... There was another guy in his practice who, um, uh, sorry, practices a, a no scalpel technique, which I did want to go did for. Did he first, just punch but... you in there or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I guess, yeah. Kicks you in there a few times. So <laughs> job's done. So I, I'm not too sure how, how his way worked because I, I couldn't get it in the end because just the, the days of the week didn't really suit us. So I had to go for the, uh, you know, the, the gory glory option but yeah he, he claims yeah scalpel free and you know sort of yeah really pain free i think but um unfortunately i didn't get to so go that far there were stitches you obviously would have had stitches down there d dissolving stitches i'm just thinking about the practicalities of having a shower and stuff afterwards wash your manhood <laughs> <laughs> so no showers on the first day they say so they, they they send you home in you've got to wear two two pairs of wife fronts just to support and then no shower on that first day. But there are stitches down there, which they are dissolved, dissolvable ones, which they need to come out between 10, I think, seven to 10 days. They should be coming out naturally. Um, but mine was sort of very, very sore. There was a, um, where, where he's done a st or stitched up the, the wound, it sort of grabbed a piece of skin in the, in the ball sack. Not to get too gory here, but, and that, I, at first I thought, oh, I just done a, he's just done a bad job. But it's, the stitch is sort of, pulled the skin tightly. So every time you sort of, your underwear sort of brushed up against it, it was a bit pain. And after the, the, the third day, and it was still doing it, I thought, oh, that probably should start to be, you know, healing by now. It shouldn't be as sore because you're putting bending on it, you know, every day. And in the end, yeah, like but got to day five and it was still, it still sore. And I thought, oh, do I go back and see this guy? Or I thought, oh, I'll take the stitches out. So I'm sitting there taking the stitches out myself. Took your own a, stitches out? Yeah, oh, Kim falls asleep early up here, mate. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll just do it myself. So I had to, I'm trying to get the iPhone out with the, with the torch on it and I've got the scissors holding, holding it up. <laughs> that sounds entirely safe. Anyway, it, it took a while to get out, but I got it in the end um, <laughs> with no blood, thankfully. And then the next day, that, that, little, um, that little lump just sort of disappeared. So. <laughs> Matt, I know you're not a doctor or you don't work in medicine. So <laughs> no. kudos to you for not, uh, yeah. And kind of tearing it back open. I might have missed my calling now. Then. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I've heard a couple of things from guys who've had it before. And one of them was that for a month afterwards, you pretty much have to have some kind of release and ejaculation each day to kind of make sure everything's still kind of working and flowing. Is that right? Or is that, a, is that an old uh, husband's tale just to kind of try to <laughs> take a few more in? Just to get permission to do it all the time. No, your friend is correct. So in our first consult with uh, Dr. Snip, he did mention that post-procedure that, yeah, to rub a few out, I guess, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> a bit crass, but yeah. So, and that's to get get it all out. So, any any build up, I guess, of um, oh, probably not in my case because of the history I've had, but any semen in there that's um, working, I guess, you want they want it all flushed out before you yeah, yeah go and get your four month uh, four month checkup. So, I haven't been keeping a tally, but yeah, I've been do, I've been doing the doctor's orders. So. <laughs> That's um, that's a, that's amazing. Like it, it seems like it's a really easy processing because it's all built up like it's this big thing. Like, and I know my dad had it done years and years ago after he'd had two kids, and it's always kind of been built up from what I've spoken. I've heard people talk about it from years and years ago. It's this really big thing, but fifteen minutes in and out, you probably could have, in theory, been back at work in the afternoon, if not, you know, the next day. Yeah, I think I think the next day I could have easily been back at work. But it is, it is so quick. And when I um, first thought about getting this done, I thought, oh, you know, maybe maybe a night in hospital, kick back, you know, not, not away from the kids. Hoping, relax, hoping. But hoping, yeah. And then when I find out that, you know, you're in and out within half an hour, it's a little, little bit let down, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it is super quick. And, um, yeah, I, I recommend, you know, any, any guy who's out there thinking about getting it done, yeah, it's such a quick procedure. You'd be so surprised. And you literally could go back to work the next day. I just happened to get mine done on a Friday and then thinking that I'd need Saturday to Sunday. But Sunday, I was, I was mowing the lawns again and back at work on Monday. So really, yeah. Now, I was, I, I was talking to your wife earlier this week about some work-based stuff because she's in the same profession as I am. And she said that you maybe shouldn't have mowed the lawn on the Sunday. It might have been going a little bit too hard a bit too early. Yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> there was, yeah, I did feel a bit. It did look a bit more bruised than it, it had been the, the previous day. So maybe maybe their three days, you know, rest is, is you know, it's legit. But I, I think in my line of work, sitting behind a desk, um, I could have easily done that. But mowing the lawn maybe was a bit stupid. But <laughs> look, the grass is growing, so I needed to get done. It's just fascinating. I mean, I'm a long way off this. So I actually have to do the whole having kids part first before this thing. But it's, it's good to good to hear about it. Because obviously, I don't think it's spoken about too much. And I actually know a buddy of mine who's just had it recently as well. So, but you said, Matt, four months, like you've got to check up. Does that mean that there's like a risk period for four months in terms of having a kid? Because the doctor follow up is in four months, or is it just that that's just when they do it? No, I think um, from memory, when we signed or when I signed the the agreement to begin with, there's a period that, yeah, I think it's three to four months where you agree that, you know, anything that happens in that period, if you were to fall pregnant, then you can't go back and, you know, have a case against the doctor because that's, that's the time period, obviously they've established that, you know, is the, is the danger zone. For that mm-hmm. kind of- yeah. Cause I've heard of a guy who um, must've been as, as good at listening or reading as, as you. And apparently he, uh, was a little frustrated as was his wife was a little surprised that after a few months they um they were pregnant after the step so it's probably a good thing to listen to the doctor there <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah listen to the listen to your doctor now, i was going to say there's that overlap there of once you've had this done that you still need to use other forms of protection until you're probably through that safe zone anyway it's it, i think it's just common sense that it's not as soon as that's done it's like happy days like i think you'd still need to use different forms of contraception over that period just again to be 100 percent sure yeah absolutely that was one of their um in their frequently asked questions about you know getting back on the wagon and it was yeah use contraceptive up until obviously that the you know the all clear is coming through that you uh you are in fact all clear so yeah like you said kang is common sense in that in that scenario um and also i noticed one of the common questions was um is the procedure reversible and it did say that in 60 to 70, sorry, 60 to 70 percent of cases, the procedure can be reversed, but there's no guarantee of pregnancy. So if you, if there's any guys out there thinking, oh, you know, I'll get the step done, and you know, 10 years later I can just get it reversed, probably don't, um, you know, bank on that. Don't even think about, you know, getting this done until you're done sowing your your wild oats, I guess. Yeah, I've heard that, and I've heard like sort of being somewhat in the medical field, not anywhere near. Dr. Sniff or any of that in that space, but I've heard that it is reversible, but it's a short window as well. So definitely like after 10 years, you got no chance. So I think there's something around like, yeah, it's got to be done within the first year or two years or something to even have a chance. So I was wondering, is it a, a pricey procedure or is it pretty like go in, chat with your GP, you know, is it, is it Medicare rebatable? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> 
I, th- I think it is actually. Yeah, I think. Well, I think it was yeah. four fifty to five hundred was the um, was the fee to get it done. And because we'd had uh, little baby Sam this year, we'd gone over the um, cap. So happy days for us at the moment. A lot of things, these medical things, are nice and uh, nice and cheap. So and I think this was one of them. So which is very handy. But again, after the procedure, I was sort of, well, actually, Kim alluded to the fact that, um, and I didn't, I didn't even know this, but. For a woman, uh, sort of, you know, a woman to get the same procedure done is is a lot more invasive than the man. Like we spoke before about, you know, twenty minutes in and out. But I think for a woman, she has to go under a yeah under a general. You know, she's you know out of action for a good couple of days um, and a lot more invasive than the man. So I think it sort of makes sense for the guys just to sort of take this one on. And um, you know, I, I guess after the, the woman's gone through childbirth and, and carrying you know, a baby for nine months. This is probably the least we could sort of do. So, um, yeah. I was going to say, that's a, it is it's a massive recovery for a, a woman who goes through, yeah, the, the female equivalent, even outside of just the normal recovery time of going back to a little bit normal, the, like the, the emotional recovery time um, of what a female would go through because it's much more invasive than what a guy goes through. Yeah, it's just, it's just not worth it when a guy can spend 15 minutes and it's, and it's done and it, 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 the next day you can go back to work if you're probably not a tradie. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. I mean, really, it's nothing. 15, 20 minutes as opposed to, you know, the amount of pain that a woman's going to go through is, yeah. I could just go, get it done on, go get it done on my lunch break. 15 minutes <laughs> in and out. Dr. Snip. With time for a, a quick bite to eat as well, yeah. But it's quite a good feeling being, yeah, a little euphoria walking out of there. And I was sort of, yeah, Kim was propping me up whilst holding baby Sam as well, so... She's carrying two she, kids to the car. She's <laughs> doing well, but you do you get a nice um you get a nice little high off those uh sedation things, and you usually have a killer sleep the next um the next night when you get home. So it's another bonus as well. Yeah, I, I did sleep right through, and um, yeah, I missed a couple of feeds, but I think I was getting let off that night, which is nice. So I just pretty much parked my ass in bed for most of the day, and yeah, walked to the freezer, got the ice pack, and then. Repeat, repeat for, for 12 hours. You find an yes, ice, pack or, flat. ice pack or frozen peas work well down, down in that area? Uh, sorry, yeah, frozen peas. Ice pack was a bit, um, yeah, a bit too rigid. Mm. Peas you, can, you can move the peas around a lot more. It's yeah, a lot, uh, right. a lot easier to position. But I mean, it sounds like for a guy, this is just pretty sweet. Like in 15, 20 minutes, go back to work the next day. But you get 24 hours off all house chores and all activities and just binge watch Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. And then if we play it up like the man flu, you might even get a tub of ice cream in there as well. <laughs> I play that up too much here. I don't get any. I don't get that anymore. Well, in, in that instance, the ice cream would be multi-purpose. You could use it to kind of <laughs> and eat the ice cream as well. It's one of those. I think it's still one of those things though, where there's <clears> men <throat> seem to think that you know going going through a vasectomy and you know getting the snip and that sort of thing, they like lose part of their manhood or something. Like, just a really sort of weird rationale, Matty. You don't you don't feel anything like that, do you? No, nah, not at all. Not at all. It's um, you're not really losing your manhood. They just you know you know it, it works as well as it did beforehand. So there's no real change. It's just uh, you know you know probably four or five days of discomfort, and that's that's it. It's like it never happened. So yeah. well, like you said, there's plenty of um, there's plenty of dads out there that you kind of go, are you the dad or are you the granddad? And you know, for something like this to safeguard and go when your kids are sort of and you're, you're half expecting they're teenagers, they're off, they're finally going to go away or something like that. And then you get another one out of, you know, a, a blessing or, or thin air. And then you just go, oh, wow, we're, uh, we're redoing all this again. It's sort of not a, not a bad idea to do. And I think, I think you're right, Ken. I don't think there's any... Uh, stigma around it. I think it's just a taboo topic from for guys. Like you really just don't really talk about it. I was gonna say the last time I spoke about it, I was just at mates when we we're having a few beers at the races, like probably twelve months ago, and a guy had li- literally was booked in for the next day after going to Oaks Day. So yeah, it, it just comes so up. So you can even have beers before it. So yeah, yeah, that's it, really it's not a tough thing at all. It just comes up infrequently. Usually after you've had a couple of beers and you talk about X or Y and you just talk about kids for a bit, and someone goes, Oh yeah, you've had two. You, two and done, one and done, three and done. And they go, oh yeah, I'm actually booked in for the SNP in a month's time. And that's where the conversation sort of ends. You don't actually hear anything more about the process behind it or yeah, the recovery or how flipping easy it is to get done and recover from it. Yeah, and that was what I was sort of looking for um, before I had this procedure to, to get a bit more information on it. And even with the, you know, a couple of guys I flagged it with, 
you know, it was very short conversations. So, and these guys, these guys are actually who have kids as well, and they didn't really want to talk about it, to be honest. So, had they been through it? No, they hadn't been through it yet. So, you know, I thought they might be a bit more inquisitive, but maybe, like you said, Ryan's just a bit taboo the subject. So, and I think this is probably one of those things that you definitely don't want to go to Doctor Google about because. If there are any horror stories, you, you probably don't want to hear it. And there would be that small percentage of it happening, but it's not something that Dr. Google is good for. Not that Dr. Google is really good for anything, but yeah, I mean, that's the problem. If people aren't talking about it and you can't go to your, your circles or friends or family or something like that, then where do you go? And usually a lot of people for health, just knowing this in the, in the space, unfortunately, a lot of people go quiet and they don't talk about things like this and then they go to the internet and then that can lead them down to really bad paths and then suddenly they're in with their GP or something going I'm dying of some form of rash or x y or z or something because they read something on google there is that danger of getting information from dr google because you might end up at a dr nick riviera of the snip world where you really probably <laughs> need to be quite reputable and does a number of these procedures especially with the delicate piece of equipment he'll he or she will have in their hands when they're yeah, they're executing this well i did actually google the uh dr snip just to you know get him to check his record and there's quite a few in brisbane actually but on the morning of um, when I was laying on the bed, I said, oh, you know, how many have you done today? And this was 10 a.m. I think you've done like three or four already. So churn them out. Wow. That's, him, that's an impressive, impressive work rate. Is he actually called Dr. Snip? Because that would be like somebody's got that marketing Best URL branding or ever. something and they're loving it. Uh, no, it's not his actual name. Um, <laughs> yeah, the neighbor actually referred to him as Dr. Snip. But I did, when I was Googling, I did see um, the vasectomist. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> one doctor in Brisbane. So I thought that was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, Maddie. So you said that, like, right at the start, that I picked up on that you said you have three kids now. I thought the whole thing about getting a snip was that you can't have future kids. Yes, yeah, so we've got three kids now, um, and I guess the reason for the snip was more just to safeguard in case the um, the, the quality semen does come back, and we do actually have an accident or a blessing as you've described before. But we do actually have one sitting in the freezer ready to go in case we do want to you know, tackle the fourth. But after oh, that, sorry. I think we're done and dusted, so. What's the storage cost on a wad these days? Um, <laughs> actually, we got the bill the other day for me, to st because I got my semen stored um, a few years back, and I think it's 180 a quarter. Oh, sorry, 180 oh. a month. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I think for Kim to store the egg was perhaps maybe three fifty. I think hers was for a year because they did actually ring up the other day and they questioned her. Oh, did you want to you know store it for another year? And she said yes. So maybe she's thinking uh, four four is a goer. <laughs> yeah. So that's not a that's not a huge uh, huge cost there at all. Actually, I would have thought. No, no. For, for what it is, I mean, yeah, for what the the service they provide, you know, um, basically storing your future i guess um you know it's very cheap well matthew thank you very much for sharing your story of your snag this week and it getting chopped in recent times and that about wraps it up for this week on daddy eats last thanks for listening and we'll be back next week for another episode or should i say serving of daddy eats last how's that for a dad joke catch you next week bye bye <laughs> bye bye